JB here, JB here, April 13th, 2023. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. It's about 110 here. Apologies for the audio issues. I rebooted my laptop for the first time in two weeks, I guess. And it went into a loop cycle of going to the boot screen, the bar goes across, then it starts over again. So now it's installing Big Sur. Now it says three hours and 57 minutes. So I have to use a different computer, so the audio is a little messy. So apologies for that, but hope everybody's doing outstanding. What a frustrating day yesterday was. Market gaps after the CPI numbers came in cool and expected. Looked like we were set to go to 415 or so on the SPY, and then it was just a complete reversal after the open. Sell the news, I guess they would say, and we we're in this environment where it was good news is bad news, and then we were bad news is good news. So um, who knows how this all works out, but I think especially with the PPI number this morning. Looks like the issue with inflation is under control. Tomorrow we'll get the start of the bank earnings, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, City, BlackRock reports. Hear a little bit more commentary in regards to what went on with Silicon Bank and all those bank uh, bank busts, I guess you would call it, if there's any contagion. If it's all under control, are we past it, or is there more pain and suffering on the way? I think it's the latter. Uh, I think the banks are better capitalized now than they were in 2008. A lot of the things that happened came out of, out of left field. And not only that, there's a playbook now to handle it where, uh, you know, the Fed and the Treasury, just all hands on deck to help su support the financial system so we don't have a repeat of 2008. Ironically enough, over those weekends after the, the collapse of, the, of Silicon Valley Bank, you see all these fear monger headlines, all these people on Fintwit fin comparing it to 2008. And here we are, uh, markets... Uh, much higher than it was back then. So we'll see how things play out. I'm going to sit here. I don't have my bull horns on. I'm not saying, you know, we're, we're entering a new bull market. We're going to head to 430, 440, 450 on the SPY. But I do, do think there's opportunities in some names um, to play for upside. And a lot of them are already uh, up quite a bit. If you saw my, my tweet over the weekend, some of these names that are uh, just monster ones to start the NVIDIA. Uh, pretty much most of the most of the tech names. But tech has been weak the last couple of days. So um, certainly something to watch. So first I'll talk about uh, Viking Therapeutics, a name I've followed on and off for the year, uh, over the years, more so because of their Nash solution. So the Nash drug coming to market. One of the reasons I found Viking uh, Therapeutics is because I liked Intercept Pharmaceuticals when they went on a, a massive tear with their positive face uh, Nash data. Uh, so I didn't really know about their uh, metabolic drug, their, their obesity uh, drug, and that's um, a huge market. You take a look at what's going on with LLY, how it's been on a monster tear after their uh, positive data. Um, you have Ozempic is just everywhere, and you have uh, NVO, which has two weight loss drugs, just a huge market. Uh, right now, they're the one who, who has the market, but now you have some better solutions coming out. LLY will come out with theirs. And then Viking only had a phase two study, but very promising. They're also going to test an oral treatment. Um, if their data comes up uh, the next cycle and it's it's positive stock, it's, it's going to be 40, 50 bucks. Who knows? I'm, I'm shocked it's still under 20 bucks because you have not only do you have the, the possibility of a, of a Nash solution, which uh, MDGL is the uh, a company that has a similar drug profile for their Nash drug. I forget the exact um, the, the specifics of it, but it's very similar um, a treatment. Uh, you know, they use the same kind of things. I don't know what to call them. Um, so the, that when MDGL had phenomenal uh, data, phase three data, it, it bode well for BKTX. So that's kind of why I went and got the calls when it was single digits. And then you had this huge news with their uh, phase two on their metabolic obesity drug. So uh, I think it's like Wall Street Journal had two weeks ago and over the weekend, a LLY article in regards to their drug that's going to come to market. And they talk about a 60 to 80 billion opportunity. Um, I mean, he was biking. It's going to get close to 2 billion, I think, once it gets over 20 bucks. But it's surprising that these companies, especially the larger biotech names who are flush with cash, would not just go out and acquire them with not, not a huge amount of risk and, and tons of upside. And especially if you're a best of breed in that sector. I mean, what are people going to do when they can find out that they can lose 7% of their body weight in 60 days? Uh, are they? But but they have to spend money. So do they cut back on gym memberships to, you know, to support that? You know, who knows? So it could be a, an even bigger addressable market than what they're making out to be. 
So that's why I like Viking at some point, and I was looking at the, the May 25s, I think they are. I think they're a buck 40. I may look to get some of those before the end of the day, or Junes, I think June 25s. And because uh, I think this is going much higher over, over the next couple of weeks. So that's that. A second one is uh, Editus. Well, I'll just call it Edit. It's an early stage uh, bio company, pretty much, uh, you know, does gene editing. Um, huge, huge market for that as well. The thing with these early stage companies, you have to have a good um, structure, good management team and, and, and folks in the company to, to progress your, your drugs. Editus has lost, Edit has lost their chief medical officer. I think they've had three or four since 2016. The most recent one was fired in 2021 for, they didn't give any rationale behind it or why that happened. So it just doesn't exude confidence when you have a company that they're not generating revenues. So you have to rely on on the team they have and edit has really dropped the ball. But now they've they've added some more people. Just this morning, they um, announced, I forget what her name is. Um, they announced uh, an addition to the board of directors and then they announced the new uh, new director, uh, a, new, a new chair. Um, so this lady was already responsible for a, a company that was acquired for $5 billion at biotech. She was the chief financial officer. She worked at Bayer. She worked at uh, some other, some of the other big drug companies. So just a, a really good, solid name to to kind of help get confidence back in, in edit. There's a 28% short interest in the name. So you have some of that. Maybe that will start to to run off and help push uh, push it into the maybe the eights, nines in the coming weeks. So I went and added some of those 750s. I went and got May 10s. Um, just as inexpensive a lot of I know some people say when it's under 10 bucks, why not just buy the common stock? But I just, I'm, I'm playing for leverage, right? So if, if edit goes to 10 bucks, those 750 is going to be at least 250, if not higher. And as we head higher, if, you know, if we get near 10 in the next week or so, the May, May 10s are going to pay out very nice. So that's kind of the thought process there. And then low risk of 15 cents, uh, that's the risk reward. <laughs> so that's kind of the thought process on edit. Love the name right now. Keem. All-time lows it hit yesterday. So not only is it going to be a bounce off the all-time lows, but then you have the positive news this morning. I think it just all bodes well for upside. Which takes us on to Roku. Roku's having a great day today, but it was 6, 6, 66.60 or so in the pre-market yesterday when the uh, CPI numbers came out. Gave it all back. Went down to um, Looking really good here with Netflix. For some reason, it run up in sympathy. I don't see anything. I guess there was a... Um, uh, was there a conference or something in regards to some of these streaming names? Um, so I don't know if that's some of it. I don't see any upgrades. Um, but could be one of those run-ups into earnings for Netflix. They report Tuesday after the close. Um, I went and added some premium build calls for, for Netflix because I think it gets to 355 or so. Uh, the 410s will really start to gain premium. Netflix typically has a very large implied move. I would have to see what it is right now. Netflix... Uh, implied move on the weekly for next week, uh, $32.18. So $32.18. Uh, and let me take my 344. So right now it's a 9.4% implied move for the options into next week. That's probably that climb, especially if Netflix continues to rally today and tomorrow. So I think there'll be an opportunity to close some or all the calls for at least 50 or 100% before the earnings. Depending on how much I'm able to get off, I might just hold a couple lottos if I can ride them free. If not, I'll probably wait till they report and then possibly trade it. But I think they're going to have another great quarter. Who knows what the subscribers look like? Are they able to you know, see any um, return on getting rid of you know, folks sharing their accounts? Is that is that helping? How, how's the ad-supported side of the business? Is that going to hurt their revenue per user margins is it better who knows so we'll hear all about that but i think that they're going to report a solid earnings report and then that just bodes well for roku which um, they'll report i think they announced they're going to report in may i think they yesterday right oh april 26 so they're going to report in two weeks so i mean you take a look at roku they had news last week with disney plus is on their platform with an ad supported model which is huge I think that just bodes well. It gives folks a reason to, to use the Roku platform, another reason. And I think they're just the best of breed when it comes to people who cut in the, cut in the cord. Roku's uh, the, a platform of choice. So, so there's some concern. Uh, Amazon, I think YouTube TV, um, all these companies are coming out with ad-supported content and a lot of it free. Roku has their own channel that's free. You can watch movies for free. You just have to 
you know, go through the ads. But Amazon, I think it's called Freevee, Freevee, Freevee or something. So if you go on your Amazon Prime account, there's videos that normally would say buy or rent. Now it says free with ads. So um, it's it's coming, and a lot of um, these platforms are probably going to turn to that as a way to retain subscribers, grow the subscriber base, revenues, things like that. So really like Roku too. I, I continue to try to play because I think it's going to trade over into the 70s. You saw yesterday once the market rolled over, Roku tumbled. It's a tough one to trade. Still have some 70s. Probably won't add anything here yet. Maybe tomorrow before the close, I'll get some into next week to play for the Golden Cross, which just happened a little while ago. That's when the 50-day moving average crosses over the 200-day moving average. Typically implies that it's breaking out and it's going to continue to break out to the upside. You also have the momentum indicators are almost have a bullish crossover. So some good signs. Just need a little kick in the butt, maybe an upgrade and then get up into the 70s uh, into next week. So that's Roku Netflix. Uh, Cigna, you had a upgrade at the start. Of, was it the start of the week? Raymond James upgraded them. Oh, no, last week. So a week, I guess last Wednesday. So I was able to close some of those Cigna calls on that upgrade um, to, to cover costs, a little profit, and I'm holding the rest. Fortunately, the stock went all the way down to 260. It was actually 260 in the morning as well. Found a bid here. It's, it's up. Uh, about one and a half percent. You have United Healthcare reports tomorrow morning. I think they're going to these stocks. These insurers are well off their their highs. So even if it's an inline number for uh, UNH, I think it it bodes well for 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 Cigna. Have some time on the calls. I'm not going to add anything more, but um, you know I think there's an opportunity for it to trade in, up into the 280s uh, next week on a decent report from UNH. Uh, well, well, we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, Cardlytics. So. Uh, um, let's see here. So Carlytics came out uh, last week with that, uh, the raising their guidance, a substantial amount. They raised a substantial amount. The stock has been just decimated over the last two years. I think it traded up near 130 at one point. Carlytics was one of my top five stocks one year. I think it was like 60 bucks, went all the way up into the hundreds. Another just, in my opinion, a great story. Here's a company that, uh, it's, it's pretty much a loyalty company for uh, credit cards and banks. They do a lot of partnerships with uh, retailers, brick and mortar restaurants, travel. And then on the flip side, they have deals with all the banks. Uh, it used to be 50% of all swipes in the US was uh, Cardlytics had a point of, uh, had line of sight to those transactions. Not the exact details, not, not by SKU or by item number, but they could see what people are buying, how many times they go to Starbucks, where they go. And because of that, they're able to tailor um, programs to these banks and the retailers that they, well, they don't guarantee, but they can say, hey, I'm going to do it. You're going to get 100% return on your investment if you use Cardlytics as a loyalty program. So if you log into your bank and you see those little things, use at Chili's, you get $5 off. Use it uh, um, at this hotel and you save, you're going to get $10 credit on your credit card. So it's, a, it's good for the bank because it keeps people loyal to using the bank. And then it's good for the retailer because the retailer is going to get increased traffic. And the person who goes to, to Target to, to save 5% on their transaction because they saw it on their uh, credit card when they logged in, are, you know, they're going to spend more, more money. So it's just a, a win-win situation. And Carlin, it's such a great story. Um, and just shocked that it's down here. It trades less than, I think it's like 0.6 times revenues. I, I think they... Have a 200, let me see if I can find it. I think they do 250 million in revenue. Let me just find this here. And I think they have a, a large short interest. Yeah, so so they, they do 298. So let's just say 300 million in revenue and they have, it's only a $163 million market cap. So I know everybody talks about the macro these days. So it's less about the individual stocks. Stocks move up and down more on what's going on in the world. The, the, the inflation numbers, the, GDP numbers, the unemployment numbers, things are moving more on that yields than moving on individual fundamentals of the underlying stocks. So to say that a, a stock trades one times revenue doesn't have as much meaning these yeah. days or recently than it did two, two, three years ago. But I still think there's opportunities. And you take a look at a, a high growth name that's had a huge, um, well, it was COVID really hurt them because when you're worried about uh, well, when your business relies on people going to brick and mortar places and traveling, COVID just destroyed them. So they've kind of reversed 
that trend. Travel's coming back in a big way. Everybody's back to shopping. So um, it's just surprising it's still down here. 14.7% short interest. Um, the stock rallied 80% after they raised their guidance. Then it sold off 20%. Then it rallied again 25%. And now it seems to have found its footing besides the sell-off yesterday, which kind of pulled down all stocks. But kind of, uh, I think it's a great sign here that it, it, it seems to be fighting its way out of this, this trend after the huge gap and move up 80%. You would think there'd be you know, maybe a room for more pullback and it stays there for now, but it's it's rallying. So I think it gets into the sevens, hopefully tomorrow, or maybe even by the end of today, and maybe it's eight, nine bucks. So I might look to get some some more strikes. I have the 750s, which were even before. I don't even know what those are at right now. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, yeah. Well, there are 25s on the bid, so, so at least I can get out even before there was 25 on the ask. So just a great story, Carbletic. So I'll, I'll continue to hold those uh, for, for higher, and I might look to get some more strikes if I get the chance. Um, Stratasys came out this morning, spurned another offer from NNDM. It's, I think they started, what, 1805, then 1920, then 2005. The thing with SSYS, as NNDM started to add a stake back in the summer, SSYS came out and did a poison pill because they think their online business is doing well and their company is severely undervalued, which is a good thing. Um, you know, as a shareholder, when the stock is, I think it was 14 or 13 bucks and you get an $18 buyout, you say, wow, quick, easy bucks. But uh, they spurn the offers because they think their valuation is much higher. They have a poison pill now. So supposedly NNDM in their last buyout uh, offer said that they're going to do a tender offer at 18 bucks if, if SSYS turns them down. The issue is they have the poison pill. So you really, they can't acquire them. They're going to try and go to the Israeli financial authorities, see if they can get uh, a solution that allows them to do that. Who knows if that's going to happen. If they're smart, just keep acquiring some more shares. I don't know what the poison pill goes up to. I guess if they acquire 51%, um, put some pressure and then, yeah, I'll have to see how that all plays out. But I thought it was going to trade a little, little higher on the news this morning, the stock had sold off after hitting 1650. Couldn't break through. I still think it heads into the 20s. Not going to add anything more just yet, but just like some of these other sectors, I think the 3D sectors it's not going away, and you're going to need companies to be able to, um, you know, help you send other things on the go. And that's what that's just where that's that's the future. So, um, yeah, just a great story. So that's Stratus. This uh, some of the other names I. Uh, Still some sage strikes. At some point, I'll look to add some more. Of my the rest of my sage calls, which I sold some to cover costs for a little over 100%. I think probably next week I'll look to add some more if there's no no movement. It looked like it was going to break out yesterday, but then it uh, sold off right after the open. With the rest of the stocks today, it's actually not doing too bad. You had uh, you know a lot of these biotech names are running pretty hard, but. You know, if it gets to 45, maybe there's a shot at the 50 strikes coming to play next week. Still don't understand how Biogen hasn't bought, the room, bought them out. They have a huge stake. They have uh, a licensing deal with them to the tune of paying uh, Sage over bi another billion dollars if, uh, you know, if their, their drug comes to market and then, you know, share, I forget the exact the thresholds and things like that, but it's a lot of money. So why pay Sage a billion dollars when you can use that money <laughs> to help acquire the rest of the outstanding share count. So I think they have 14 or, oh, maybe less than it, maybe 7%. They bought they their licensing deal and a stake purchase of, of Sage was at 100, I think it was $110. His stock's down here at 44 bucks and it's a $2.5 billion company. So it just doesn't make sense that Biogen hasn't bought them out. But I think that's it for my rant. Trying to think of some other names. Uh, keep looking at pool. A uh, pool in sight. Uh, pool's a great story. Uh, people were making their at-home vacation spots with COVID. So you had a lot of people looking to get pools installed in their backyard. Uh, once you have a pool installed, a lot of people, what do they need to do? They need to maintain the pool. And who, who does that? The pool does that. So what does that, what, what does that mean? It means that tons of recurring revenue now that wasn't there because they're, they have a, a larger install base of the pool. So you know, you stole 100 pools and you have 50 service contracts of those 100, and that's all recurring high margin revenue. So just a great story pool. Came off quite a bit since, let's see, I think since it's December. 
and you would think some of it's seasonal, right? You would think this is when they're busy season comes, people start opening the pools. You're going to have to open them. Then you have to do maintain them down from 420 um, in, in February, got an upgrade from loop capital. It churned in the three twenties for a while. Then all of a sudden just took off the last two days up into the four forties. I was looking at some calls. The spreads are wide. Premiums are high. It's very, very tough uh, to find a decent risk reward uh, trade there because not only is it tough to get in, but if you got to get out <laughs> and there's not, you know, not much liquidity and then the spreads are tough, you're going to get the market makers are just going to kill you. So um, I was looking at the 400s. I think they were 45. Then he went up to a dollar and now they're back. Let's see what they are. Let me see what this is right now. Um, oh, 25 cents. So maybe the 390s, I might be able to get 50. I, I just have too much right now that I don't want to put too much risk on. Maybe maybe tomorrow I'll look. The other thing is pool reports earnings a week from today. So there's some, there's some premium builds, um, possibilities, especially if it moves, moves back into the mid mid 400s because you know 450 460 so maybe an opportunity there uh smg another seasonal name um, i mean they they do more than just dirt but um you know the marijuana industry is, is heating up so they have an acquisition that uh bodes well in that space but but here's a time for gardening and fertilizing things like that here and what companies front and center when you go into any of these retailers home depot lowe's so um, they had a release on Monday, the Monday that they're leveraged. So some of the issue with, with that SMG is they have tons of debt. So in this current environment where you have high rates, <laughs> rates are high and you have companies who have lots of debt as they look to try and kick the can down the road by maybe, uh, redoing their debt and pushing it out further, the, the rates are much higher. So you're paying a lot more to finance that debt. So it's not a good thing. So when you have a company like SMG that comes out and says that they're able to uh, they were able to decrease their debt load, it, it just uh, you know it's going to add to their EPS, right? They're not paying as much interest, so I think that that alone uh, pushed the stock up quite a bit. I think it gets over uh, 80 bucks soon. So you know I got inexpensive 85s. Unfortunately, those aren't looking too good right now, but I think if we get back into the you know back over 78, and I think it hit 78 and then just and fell back. There after the close at 7811. Um, actually, it was 7811 yesterday before uh, selling off. So, really like that name. I'm, I'm not going to add anything more just yet, but I, I may look for some other strikes uh, in the coming days. Oh, Yext. You know, unfortunately, Yext tried to, I think it was nine and change. Came all the way, uh, I think it was five, four, all four days last week, sold off. Then yesterday came under pressure with, with the rest of the market. Might have to wait for earnings. They're going to report earnings. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, oh, they report more earnings at the end of March, uh, start of March. So they have April, May, June. So somewhere in June. Maybe I'll look to, to get some Junes there. Um, that's that one. Oh, True Panion. So another great story. What Troop was one of my top five stocks I, I, a couple of years ago. I'm trying to think when it was, four or five years ago. The stock was in the 20s. It might have even been, been in the teens. It ran all the way up to 90, so uh, 90, 90 and change. I, I got to pull up my chart. Uh, another great story, right? If there's, I wouldn't call it a recession proof company, 158 back in November of 2021. So I'm not saying that it's 100% re recession proof, but if there's one thing that people will uh, do things for, it's their pet, right? And some, some people will do more for their pet than their significant others. So, um, Here's a, a program that one of the, the huge expenses, and typically it's unexpected, is when a, a vet bill, something, maybe your, your, your animal's sick, your dog is throwing up or lethargic or you know, th things like that. You take them to the vet and the first thing you're gonna do is gonna say, oh, we need to do an x-ray. And they're like, oh, there's 200 bucks. Oh, we gotta do blood work. There's another 200 bucks. And th it's just like a snowball. Next thing you know, you <laughs> they're gonna say, oh, your pet probably just ate something just Keep an eye on them, and then two two days later they're fine. But then you're stuck with a thousand dollar vet vet bill. So here comes Trupanion, where you you pay a monthly fee, and they take care of those surprises, right? You, you're paying a fixed cost, so that when something unexpected happens to your pet, you're able to take care of them without having some kind of, you know, have to ring up your credit card debt or or, or what have you. So just a great story, and they they've have some park partnerships with State Farm. Um, 
the issue lemonade came out and i think they have now uh, i think that was some of the reason the stock sold off this concern that lemonade's going to uh, you know in, in, encroach on some of their market i don't think so i think true panion they already got a system down that they've been doing this for so long um i think it's just a matter of time before this one starts to head back over 50 bucks i've always used the anal analogy with true panion if you go and look in europe i think there's like a a 40 or 50 percent penetration of all the pets in, in in England and some of these other European countries. I think it's England's the the case study that 50% of them have, 50% of the, the dogs and, and cats have are covered under pet insurance, but in the U.S. it's only two or or three percent. So if they're able to just grow that to five, six, seven percent, it, it's billions of dollars of of additional revenue on the table. And even if there's com competitors out there, it just it just bodes well for for True Panion. Uh, it's, the other thing is very hard to value uh, True Panion because they're, they're an insurer. So people like to short the stocks. There's a lot of bears on the name because they they try to compare it to uh, to an insurer. And yeah, there's a 25% short interest on, on True Panion. Uh, the other thing is they, they kind of mock True Panion because they, they think the company is a, treats themselves as a tech company whereas they're really an insurer. So it's a very easy company to poke holes in. Um, there's insur a lot of insurance regulations that go on too in each state, and there's been state attorney general investigations, True Panion, I think one in Washington, one in, um, in two states. So very easy, again, to fear people out of positions and create shorts because once you hear, oh, they're under investigation by the state attorney general for uh, you know, practices that violate insurance regulations, blah, 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 it's just very easy to to get people to jump on board. And these days when the whole short community is all, they're all buddy, buddy. So they all probably tag team on, on plays now. That's just like folks are doing on the way up with these meme stocks. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. But that's that's why I went and got those calls on True Panion when it started to break out. Sure enough, it, it sold off back under 40 bucks. Some nice bounces the last two days showing some signs. I think if you can get back over 45, then 50 plus possibly this week. So, I mean, next week. And I think that's it. I'm kind of out of breath. Spies up here at 412. Um, if you had watched yesterday, we definitely did not look very good for, for upside for the rest of the week. PPI numbers came out this morning, pretty much reiterating uh, the CPI numbers. Uh, so the banks tomorrow, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully if there's, you know, a lot of people listen to Jamie Diamond. So if he's able to kind of quell some concerns that there's no more major risk of contagion, from the Silicon Bank fiasco, and yeah, maybe maybe uh, maybe we get up to 415. Um, I, I think that's it. Last but not least, I, you know, I did the GLD puts on Friday. Uh, sure enough, what happened? Gold sold off on Monday, <laughs> a day late, dollar short. They were just inexpensive lottos. At some point, gold's going to have a, a one two percent drop, or maybe a multi-day pullback back to 1950 or so. Um, it's funny, a lot of the people that I used to think we're not gold bugs are now all bullish on gold. So, I mean, maybe it goes much higher here. I've always, I'm definitely not a gold bug. I get the reason why it's going up. It, to me, especially if inflation is rearing, a, rearing its head back in you know, 2010, 2011, that was the bull case on gold. We're going to get, as the Fed pumped so much money into the system in 2008, 2009, the rescue, the, the, the financial sector, the auto, auto sector, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get runaway inflation, hyperinflation, and gold is going to go to the moon, 10,000, 15,000, you know, whatever, whatever it was. Never came to fruition. I think it went up to 2,000 maybe, all the way back down to 1,200 or so, and it, now it's right near all-time highs. It might be at all-time highs right now. Um, but you would think we had the inflation, right? Um, and then the other argument for the gold bugs would be that the dollar is worthless. It's going to zero. China is going to try and take over. Uh, their currency, the yuan, as a as a reserve currency in the world. China's hoarding gold. Uh, there's not enough gold blocks to back uh, the uh, paper gold that's out there. So the physical gold does not match up with the paper gold. These ETFs um, are supposed to have a, a holdings. They don't have the holdings. There's all these you know conspiracy things out there that uh, folks think that makes gold attractive here. I get it. You know gold. Offers some protection, especially in times of volatility and uh, geopolitical concern, things like that. So we'll have to see how it plays out. But those are kind of thought process. I think at some point it's going to come with a little bit of pressure. 
Um, not only that, the U.S. dollar is weaker today, so that's kind of helping put a bit in. But at some point, I made the, the GLD puts on Friday looked inexpensive on a risk four basis. Didn't even need you need like a half percent move, and those would have been a ten bagger. So that's kind of the thought process that if I see an opportunity, maybe some weakness, if it doesn't break up to twenty sixty or so, I may look to get some inexpensive lotto puts on GLD. And uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for listening. Sorry about the issues. And now it says three hours and fifty seven minutes till my big sir is installed on my on my Mac. So hopefully it it's all fixed. <laughs> all right, folks, have a great day. Rock and roll.